Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. Fizz.org is reporting physicists claim to have observed quantum effects of Hawking radiation in the lab for the first time. Now, interestingly enough, this was an experiment that was done by a physicist at the Israel Institute of Technology, Jeff Steinhauer, where he published a paper in the Journal of Nature Physics describing the experiment. And basically, it's a virtual black hole that shows the Hawking radiation is possible. Here's a quote from the abstract, quote, we observe spontaneous Hawking radiation simulated by quantum vacuum fluctuations emanating from an analog black hole in an atomic Bose-Einstein condensate. Correlations are observed between the Hawking particle outside the black hole and the partner particles inside. These correlations indicate an approximately thermal distribution of Hawking radiation. We find that the high energy pairs are entangled while the low energy pairs are not, within the reasonable assumption that excitations with different frequencies are not correlated. The entanglement verifies the quantum nature of the Hawking radiation. The results are consistent with a driven oscillation experiment in a numerical simulation. Motherboard reported on the same story, scientists build a mini black hole out of sound waves. And there were other articles like this one, artificial black hole just gave us the strongest evidence yet for Hawking radiation. And actually the concept is quite simple. If you watch this video produced by 60 Symbols, the black hole machine, it outlines an experiment done with water where it basically looks at a spiral or a vortex made artificially in a water pool and uh, you can sort of model what a black hole would look like not with the medium of water but with the medium of space-time which is kind of hard to wrap your head around but if the effects are consistent with the way it works in water as it is with space-time then they have a point in showing that hey what they call the Hawking radiation is possible because if there are particles that get entangled where one particle is beyond the event horizon which means it's going to get sucked into the black hole and the other one is moving away from it but is not over the event horizon then that particle can escape and so there is information that is escaping out and that's what hawking radiation represents so yeah totally possible if you think about whirlpools and i'll make a video showing this a little bit later but in another video i made recently about the rio olympics i talked about how i was a competitive swimmer growing up one of the things that i learned while i was swimming was how to make whirlpools in the water with my hand so i'll make a video there's a pool right outside here and show you how to make whirlpools with your hands in the water and you can make a pretty big one and the way the energy flows with water it just gives a different concept a different perspective of what we're dealing with with space-time if there is any correlation which many people in the world of physics suggests that there is now of course that upholds you know the verbiage that's associated with Einsteinian physics and with Einstein being touted as almost godlike status with his contributions to physics it does make you question the validity of all that's going on here but I think if you look at Teslonian physics, which is the counter, and you start investigating the electric universe model, it's basically a different way of explaining the same phenomenon. So I think the object of what we're looking at with black holes is consistent. So yeah, when we do make whirlpools in the water, I think there is a correlation or at least a connection to how black holes might work. And so when we look at that and we look at the understanding of quantum entanglement, again, if two particles are entangled, one is beyond the event horizon, one is above it then presumably, if black holes are what they think they are, then one particle will go through the black hole and disappear or go to another dimension. As Hawking has recently said, he says that they may be portals into different universes or something like that. It was ridiculous. So looking at black holes in connection to portals and gateways into other worlds or universes, this is verbiage that the physics community are using themselves. So it's not all crazy talk and science fiction. But in any case, back to those particles, one gets sucked in, the other one escapes because it's going the opposite direction and it's not caught in the event horizon. Well, there you have it, what they call Hawking radiation. And there's a lot of dots to connect here in terms of the virtual black hole that was created here to look at quantum effects. You know, if they are able to program a model of the universe, which is basically kind of what they're trying to do, it really does speak into this greater implication of the abilities of augmented realities and virtual realities 
and our reality merging in a sense. And there's that angle of it as well, where we're already sort of opening Pandora's box with this virtual world that we are creating, you know, as technologies increase and infiltrate. We can model various objects that we observe within creation with a computer, with a virtual system and learn about it. And so that's what makes everything so profound and interesting when you start looking at, hey, that means that creation itself is programmed. I mean, our creation, our physical world is programmed. Who programmed our physical reality? And it gets into that whole matrix thing, right? But anyway, this is all interesting stuff and cutting edge of public modern science. But as I said before, I think it does convey some ultimate truths about God's word and the Bible. And I think when there's verses like Job 38, where it says, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. The reason why the Bible uses the whirlwind as something where God actually speaks out of, like in Job 38, 1. And of course, 2 Kings 2, where Elijah is taken up by a whirlwind to heaven. Isaiah 66, 15, for behold, the Lord will come in fire and his chariots like a whirlwind. It seems to be used a lot in conjunction to these spiritual realities connecting with ours, this whirlwind and these chariots that come out of it, Elijah being taken up in it. It's a very strange phenomenon that happens in the Bible that most Christians or even atheists might look at and say, ah, oh, yeah, they're attributing supernaturalism to simple tornadoes or something. But I really think there's something else going on here. And I think it has a connection point to something like a black hole or a wormhole and connecting different parts of creation or perhaps to other universes or another dimension or what the biblical worldview teaches, which is that there's a spiritual world, a second heaven, and also a third heaven where God dwells. And how does that relate to the string theory? Perhaps there is a conjunction point with the different dimensions of strings. I honestly think that we're all looking at this creation and we're trying to come up with words to describe it and to explain it, but we're having a difficult time as fallen humans looking through the glass darkly, coming up with the right words, with the right labels that we can all agree on to label certain events or objects that we see within these phenomenon like a black hole in creation. So ultimately, again, it just goes to show this loop around of mythology or supernaturalism that has been dismissed as fairy tales or fables by materialism, by the established communities, when all along they knew that there was a supernatural aspect to this. And it's kind of looping back around as science discovers more and more and more, the only way they can describe it or explain things is to start to appeal to a metaphysical property that is actually holding all this together or extra dimensions mathematically to explain what is actually happening with the fabric of creation. So very interesting stuff here. Developments that I think show that there isn't necessarily this war between religion and science. Okay, I see a lot of people commenting about, oh, religion and science don't go together. Or if you go to my breakthroughs in quantum physics video, you'll see a lot of people say, good video until you brought out the Bible. Like it was like this killjoy for them to hear me talk about this stuff and then suddenly bring up the Bible to kind of kill the buzz of whatever. It's because it's not really that far apart. I think there is cohesion in terms of what we're looking at. Now, what we ascribe to it, who we ascribe as an author to it, and how we relate it to the greater purpose of humanity and everything else, that might be totally different. But in terms of the actual object itself of something like a black hole, hey, it looks like God traveled in one, more or less, some sort of whirlwind back in the Bible and it's recorded. And could it have just been some sort of tornado? Sure, but this thing actually took Elijah away into heaven. I think there's something else going on here. And I think it's worth investigating, if you're a Christian, into these topics, because there seems to be a major connection point that is beyond science fiction even. And with the way things are going, it's going to be important for us to grasp some of these ideas, because obviously it seems that most Christians aren't interested in this stuff. And it's because at least American Christian culture, they've created this fear of deviating from the established scholarship or institutions and so they have to appeal to it to maintain you know money basically i see that a lot in institutions and the attitudes they've created with that but the reality also is that there are lots of christians who are scientists and they may vary on the scale of theology in terms of explaining the cosmology and how they attribute it to their own theology but again 
We're all in this together. We just have a different viewpoint on who wrote it and how it's going to end up and where you and I as individuals play a part in this grand story of humanity. And for me, the one who brings true restoration is Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. And in my opinion, if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're effectively abandoning your own humanity and abandoning it to spiritual entities that want nothing but to take your soul with them to hell, where these fallen entities belong. Remember, humans don't belong in hell. It was made for the devil and his angels. So stuff to think about. Let me know what you think about these stories and some of these thoughts about the conjunction point between these experiments, black holes, and all that stuff as it relates to the Bible. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless.